Good morning. Uh, now that I've had a chance to take the bona fide out and uh, the build's pretty much done, there's a few things I might fine tune later on down the road. Uh, I wanted to do a final review on the kayak, um, my likes, dislikes, uh, things that I probably would have done different, you know, all the good stuff. Uh, before I get started, as always, Southern Nevada Kayak Anglers, if you're not a member, become a member. Um, it doesn't matter if you're in Southern Nevada or you're outside. Uh, it's a good group of people. Uh, we're just avid anglers. You know, we want to help the community. Um, if you're already in the group, check the posts. Um, our good buddy June, uh, he's going to be doing some classes for everybody, helping them with um, tournament rules and things like that. Um, I think I think a bunch of us have noticed over this past year that there's a few things that um, you know people keep getting caught in the same mistakes, and unfortunately, it's costing them score, it's costing them fish, um, and we want everybody to have fun. But it is also uh, a tournament series, so you know there is there is money on the line, and we have to be fair to those that are that are still following the rules, and you know. Uh, just make it good for everybody. So he's going to be doing some of those classes. He's got one this weekend. I don't know if it's full yet or not, or if we can get some more inst instructors um, that have already done their background check and stuff, um, because um, it's going to be a volunteer um, event. Um, also, um, yeah, Southern Nevada Kayak Anglers, Battleborn Tackle, um, buy your tackle here. Okay. <laughs> um, honestly, I uh, this is owned by one of our guys. Uh, it's vet, vet owned and operated. Uh, I've said it in other videos. He is always adding new stock. He spends a lot of time talking to different distributors and trying to make sure that there's there's a good uh, source for all the stuff you might need out on the water. Um, you know, and uh, we like to support him because he's always supported us. Uh, so that, and then uh, I have a different hat on today. Um, this is for, it's not actually fishing related at all. This is the uh, Fraternity of Desert Bighorn. Um, some people may know who they are. A lot of guys in the angler industry don't, and I know it's off topic. Uh, but these guys, they are um, here in Nevada. Uh, somebody, it's a group of people that I work with um, very closely with my job. And uh, Fraternity of Desert Bighorn, they were um, founded in 1984, and it's exactly what it's for, Desert Bighorn. Um, these guys put a lot of work into habitat for the Desert Bighorn, um, which those of you that know your, your terrestrial wildlife, um, you know, it's, it's one of our state animals. Um, it's special to Nevada because we have, we are one of the only states that have um, all three of the West Coast species out here, um, and we do our our best to make sure that you know we had the hundred year drought and make sure that we can get them water out uh, where they live, and these guys are a big part of it. Um, the reason I bring them up is um, we're always looking for volunteers. Anybody who who knows how to use a shovel, use a pick, use a screw gun. Um, anybody that wants to be a part of something more, uh, we're always looking for bodies. Uh, these builds, uh, they take quite a bit of labor, and um, you know, uh, we get we basically get a weekend to build them. So uh, anybody that's looking, you get, can go to their web their website, um, or you can go on the Endow website uh, for volunteer opportunities and get a hold. Um, a volunteer coordinator and find out how you can help with this. Um, so something off the water, but uh, it's still important. Um, we have a lot of habitat um, uh, work that we've done in the Lake Mead area. Uh, it just helps the overall ecosystem. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the review. Uh, I'll go from bow to stern. Um, I've already done the video on the the build itself i'll touch on a few things that um that i like don't like etc so let me go ahead and turn my camera around oh also 
somebody asked me, somebody messaged me and asked why I do the lives instead of just recording a video and editing it and putting that together. Uh, honestly, I'm a better public speaker than I am doing uh, recording videos and then editing. Um, I've probably got a couple hundred hours of fishing videos that will probably never see the light of day. Uh, once I sit down on the computer and I get working on it, I you know, get whatever it is, self-conscious, or I don't like the, the angle or whatever, I'm, I'm overcritical, and then it just gets buried in a, in a file. So um, that's why I do this. Uh, I feel it helps me with my nerves and, and I can get more information out. So anyways, to the kayak. All right, Bonafide PWR 129. Um, the one objective bow mount worked exactly how I thought it was going to. I mean, it's pretty basic. They, they were the pioneers of getting us bow mounts for our kayaks. Uh, this thing's super sturdy. Um, I'll say this one's sturdier on this kayak than it was on the Hobie um, Pro Angler. Uh, when I was loading this up in the truck yesterday, it slipped, and the only thing I could catch was this, this handle. Um, and it didn't loosen up, no creaking, um, nothing. I mean, this thing's solid. Uh, I don't drop my motor full weight. I always let it down easy for those that do. Um, this thing, this thing's a beast. Um, my Anderson plug worked as intended. Uh, I don't know what'll happen in rougher waters. Uh, I did notice once I plug it in, there is there is a gap uh, on the outside, um, so it's not as waterproof as I might like. But I had this thing crashing through some wakes, uh, some boats that were out on the water, and I mean this front end is actually the highest. I wish I could get a better angle. There we go. This front end is actually the highest part of the boat. Um, in the water and once I get some more videos from inside the kayak you'll be able to see this front end up, comes up pretty high so most most of my water when I was splashing was hitting this way back uh, it planes really good even with all that weight in the front um, I had said in my previous video that I was concerned about this uh, catch board holder where I would have to you know, leave it here for transport, and then I would, you know, undo the lid, and I would have to lift this up, pull it out, and then keep it stowed back around me uh, for fishing. Uh, after a full day of fishing yesterday, I this stayed stowed in here. Um, every time I caught a fish, uh, when I use my my CPR method, which I'll go through again because it's that's something I really I really think is. Uh, is the best way to do it. Um, I was able to just lean forward and just grab the catch board, slide it out, and then uh, when I was done, when you actually, I'll try to show you guys as best as I can. So I just slide it out over my my screens, and then when I was done, I could just put it in like that and give it a little lift and slide it in. So. What I did have to do is I had left my latches undone, except for when I was moving across the lake. But I mean, this thing doesn't this thing doesn't flop or anything. I mean, it's actually pretty pretty stiff in there. Um, so yeah, I was able to use that the whole time and didn't have to take up any deck space. So that was surprising. It was beneficial, and I do like that. Um, the one objective mount for the screens, uh, I mean, it's, it's bulletproof. thing didn't move at all. Uh, I still would have preferred having something a little higher, uh, just to clear all this stuff. I mean, I didn't have any connection issues. There's no, I mean, the wires aren't getting weak or anything like that. Um, but I did, like I said before, I lost use of the pod, um. Uh, the one benefit of this uh, this board that they have versus um, I think the one that uh, Gene Jensen with Fluke Master is using that comes up and over um, is when you're sitting in this kayak with how high that seat is, these screens are so low 
I mean, nothing gets in your way. I mean, casting, fan casting around this whole kayak. I mean, virtually other than the back end, when I get my rods in there, like this is clear line of sight to everything. Uh, very low profile, super nice. Uh, the Tacticam, I didn't get a chance to use. Um, I don't know if I said it in another video. Uh, I would probably go with GoPros, even though they are pricey. I know it's not not in everybody's budget. Um, I use this, and then I use my uh, Osmo Action from DJI. Um, I would go with the GoPros. These were super affordable on Amazon, and then I found out why is there is no support for this camera anymore. Um, the you can't download the app anymore there's you email tacticam and they they basically tell you tough luck um very disappointing um that we cannot use this camera as intended um if you're okay with spending 30 dollars on a camera that looks cool and use it like the old uh gopro what are they, the GoPro Micros or the GoPro, the little square ones that you basically just recorded and then you would have to download all those files and edit them later. Uh, this works for that, but the accessories that this came with, you know, you get a remote that you can turn it on and off, you know, you can do photo capture, you can do all kinds of different things. You can't re really utilize on this because you have no access to your phone. Um, you can't view things through the app, so basically you have to hope that you got this in the right position, that you're going to catch good video, and then run with it. So if you were to go this route, my suggestion would be put it somewhere out of the anglers, uh, from di good distance to the angler so that you can get a wide angle shot, and just run it, um, and then you'll have to do all your stuff on your computer later. Um, yeah, so it'll work. I mean, it was $30 uh, down from, I think these were 200 when they first came out. Uh, I jumped on them because Chad Hoover did a video um, where he raved about them, and they're just, they're not what they were when they came out, and I don't know why Tacticam decided to um, give up on this project. I think it would have been highly competitive for... Um, you know, those that can't afford GoPros and, and DJIs. So, anyway, off my soapbox for that one. Uh, this uh, paddle holder, this thing's perfect. I mean, this thing didn't get in my way at all throughout the day. It doesn't stick out very far. Uh, even with the um, live scope mount, getting this thing in and out is just, it's, yeah, it doesn't change anything. It's great. Um, do, do, do. Tripped over my trailer. Okay. Uh, coming back, the steering on this kayak, it could be because I'm not used to it, or it could be because with a bow-mounted motor, the rudder is not big enough. Uh, I didn't use this at all yesterday. Um, I wouldn't say it's unusable, uh, it's just not very usable, if that makes any sense. Um, the slightest touch on these, I mean, has drastic effect, which surprised me a lot because if I come back here, this rudder is half the size of the one I had on the Hobie, and it has twice the amount of reaction. Um, for some people that might be good. For me, it was not. Uh, it actually, it actually made me nervous a couple times as I was out there testing it, putting it through the motions. Um, so, this this rudder here. I mean, it's tiny, um, but I mean, it would swerve this thing like crazy. Um, now you have to have this down. Um, when you're running because this is also um, this is also what uh, creates um, you being able to track right still in the straight position which is where I left it for most of the day uh, but for steering purposes 
these cables are better utilized for if you were going to do a rear rear mount motor like the Newport Vessels one or the Torquedo. Um, you'll notice too that these the steering on this and I think it has to do with the size of that rudder is once you hit once you hit a certain point okay the rudder will track it like reverse tracks so when you steer too far in one direction instead of the kayak continuously turning in that direction it will actually start to steer the other way and like i said i think that's just because of the size of that rudder it can't thin enough water for how much torque is coming from that front motor um so i mean i'm sure somebody will create a larger rudder upgrade for this at some point uh the downfall of that would be the way that this kayak stows you go with a bigger rudder and then you lose the ability to to tuck it all nice and neat so that is one gripe that i have about this uh, the, the drainage in the decking, I put scupper plugs in, uh, these are the cheapo ones, so they don't really work very well, uh, all day I had water coming up and bubbling in, so it is what it is, but as far as how this deck, uh, diverts the water when it comes in through those scupper holes, um, other than in the front here, which I had mentioned in my first video was one of the reviews that they had given when this thing was uh, still a prototype, is you do get water pooled up here in the front. Um, the the benefit of being a hobbyholic is that I've been in so many different kayaks over the past year that um, I get to balance them against each other, and there's not been a kayak that I've been in that doesn't have water that pools up in the front there. Um, those of you that have some other brands that I haven't gotten to jump into um, may not have experienced that, but it's it's been normal enough for me throughout the Hobies, the Old Towns, and now this Bonafide, so it's not a big deal to me. Um, better scupper plugs would definitely help, uh, but this track right here, uh, it goes all the way back, and it holds a decent amount of water, so... I'd never had any water that was coming up over the top here. Um, I was able to switch to um, some hay, hay dudes out of my, my waders, and my feet were dry all day. So uh, the other criticism that I would have is um, this kayak boasts to be made for anglers by anglers. It's, it's all about fishing with this kayak. That's its sole purpose. This is not a recreational watercraft. It is made for tournament fishermen. Um, so it is disappointing to me that when you take your catch board, uh, you know, that we're in, we're in 2024, and you can do it in the old towns, you can do it in the wider kayaks. Um, what was it, old town that has the shelf for it? Um, some of the other brands have a shelf for it that you can do it. But being able to put your put your catch board on your kayak, okay, and have it down low, okay. Um, some of the some of you guys that do tournaments and do more than recreational fishing understand that that a fish up here, okay, is not a very secure fish. Can you measure it? Yes. Can you score it? Yes. Um, I know a few people that have had, and it happened to me last year, um, in my biggest fish out of Sand Hollow, I had to measure up here because the Hobie's designed the same way, and it wasn't the first time the fish jumped off, it wasn't the second time the fish jumped off, but the third time the fish tried to jump off, he jumped off the side of my board, off the kayak, and uh, I lost him. So a lot of companies are starting to understand that being able to keep your catch board lower in the boat to measure saves that from happening um, but this one this one doesn't you still have to do the still have to do the whole diagonal method or whatever now is it the end of the world no no it's not but um, 
I do think that is a common, common thing that people have brought up before with these kayaks is being able to get that catch board lower or have some kind of shelf to set it on that, you know, their fish jumping out isn't crazy. Um, the tray storage, uh, I mean, it's just a big bin. So <laughs> I would suggest people that if anybody jumps into this kayak, all the, all the new bona fides are, are running this, this kind of system. Um, it's a junk drawer, like the one you have in your kitchen next to the next to the uh, counter when you walk in you know you throw all the stuff that you don't see for six months uh this drawer is very much that way i mean like everything just gets dumped in here and it's great because you know where it's at uh but you do spend some time getting through here trying to find stuff um yeah so just be mindful if it's something that you know you're gonna need quite often uh choose different storage uh, especially for things like after you catch a fish or land a fish, um, rifling through this can be difficult. Um, cause it, I mean, it's big too. I mean, it's, it's a huge bin. Great for keeping stuff, but not stuff that you need quick access to. Um, but yeah, didn't have any problems with it sliding, stayed out of the way. Works as I'm sure they intended. Uh, my cup holder, this thing's great. Perfect. I'm probably going to move this. Um, my monster started to taste like fish halfway through the day because um, <laughs> I keep forgetting my right side is where I like to net fish and draw them in. So I just drip them all over this. But, I mean, this thing's perfect. It's a little big for your standard monster can. Um, it'd be good for those Stanley tumblers that everybody's going nuts over. Uh, but it works. It's good. Uh, the seat, this seat is comfy. Uh, this seat is perfect. Uh, I will say there is a break-in period, even throughout an entire day of fishing. I had to make adjustments to the straps because uh, the fabric it breaks in, it stretches, things like that. Um, but even without a, a kayak pad, uh, this thing's just comfy. Um, Dude, I sat in this thing. I mean, I almost didn't even want to stand up to fish. This thing was so comfy to sit in. Um, and when I say this high seat position is high, it is high. Um, like, I'm five foot eight, five foot nine on a good day. Um, and sitting in this seat, my thighs were, I mean, completely parallel. So you're talking the entire length of my my lower half of my leg which those that have sat in a bunch of kayaks know that that's it's a pretty high position um i was able to sight fish better while sitting down uh certain areas where it started to get uh, muddy i still stood up um but yeah you could spend an entire weekend in this seat and not have an issue uh standing up in this kayak uh don't take for granted how much deck space there is in here I mean, I was able to stand where I would normally stand, which I usually rest the back of my calves against my seat, and then I brace to the outside because it allows me to rotate and turn more because uh, I'm a huskier guy. So uh, it allows me to be more flexible having that. But I was able to, you know, walk up to the front here, uh, go in my hatch, was able to, uh, instead of, instead of like, slide my butt in a 360 degrees to try to like reach in the back and put my knees on the seat you know for stability i was able to just turn around on the deck and lean straight over um this one is i think it's a couple inches narrower than your your standard big yaks nowadays but uh you don't even feel it uh it was awesome uh the one objective uh Boards, sideboards, uh, I do hope that One Objective continues to produce these for other models of kayaks. Um, this has probably been one of my favorite purchases for this kayak. Uh, I will say, going the route that I did, the, they call this the Mega. The Mega for one side that has all the lanyard holes and the tool slots for one side 
and then the standard for the other side where I mounted the live scope mount is the way to go and it doesn't matter what side you put this on. Uh, I could not see a purpose for having two of these, these giant ones. Yes, you get more track space back here, but with all the cutouts, I don't see a reason for ha doubling this up. Um, especially if you're like us and you want to put two kayaks on a trailer. Um, and ours is custom. I finally put bunk boards on there. Uh, you, you have, I mean, this, other than that live scope mount, this sticks out pretty far. Um, it takes up some space, but honestly, yeah, this worked perfect. I mean, stows all my stuff. Oh my gosh. All right. Hold on. Dang it. There you go. Worked better than that on the water. Uh, stores all my stuff. Um, for the way that I do my CPR method, uh, it's perfect. Like, I love having this out here. Uh, I'm going to actually do another video on that later on my method. Uh, Gene Jensen, he does do one. Um, but, you know, I'd just like to make one. But, yeah, this having your fish gripped in the water, out of the way. And then when I bring it back to the boat, I just stow those. I know where they are the entire time. Um, the biggest thing for me is the pliers on the Hobie, you know, they were either in the cup holder or they were somewhere else and, you know, you spend more time looking for them to get a hook out than actually fishing. Uh, these stack packs, I didn't really use them for anything. Uh, I put my keys in my wallet in one. Uh, I didn't, I didn't use it for my smelly jelly and stuff like I had planned on. Uh, but super, super sturdy. They didn't go anywhere. Uh, the position that I had them in worked for me. They weren't in the way at all. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just extra storage you can always use on a kayak. So they passed my check. Um, I even, uh, drove with these attached, um, on here and didn't lose one. So to me, that's a good sign. Am I going to do that every time? Probably not. Uh, cause these are like, what, like, I don't know. It was like 80 bucks or I don't know. I don't remember exactly what it was, but they're not cheap. So even though they worked for the ride down to the lake, I wouldn't trust them when I go to have a suit to stay in place. And I wouldn't want to, cause I can just stuff them under there. Um, the back side here. Uh, yeah, there's nothing to really say. The battery worked, the connection worked down there. Um, like I said, though, with the way that this kayak was designed down there, the seat has to stay in the high position. Um, I even transported this with it in the high position, had no problems. You could unconnect, uh, disconnect all that and then put this in the low position, but I mean, it stayed in the position I fish in, so I'm not. I'm not concerned. It worked. Uh, the box. There's nothing to say about the box. It worked. It's stable. I opened it twice yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> I only got to use it twice. Uh, I uh, was fishing a spot and for some odd reason I kept getting snagged. Lost a brand new uh, um, Iconelli jig. So, that, yeah. But that works uh the net situation i still don't have a clue what to do with the net um yeah for most of yesterday it just stayed back behind my seat like that that's what that's where it stayed all day yesterday uh i don't really know what to do with it at this point until i add until i decide to cut in here and add a flush mount um, like some of the other guys have done, or I add another rod holder somewhere. Uh, I just don't know yet. So that's where it stayed. Um, this, yeah, I mean, the one objective battery holder that I got with the strap, I mean, 
it worked as intended. I don't think this battery, even without it, this battery would go anywhere. I mean, it's in there tight, and once you get your box in, um, it's not going anywhere. This, though, I would say is beneficial for if I ever capsized that most everything in this kayak is bolted down for at some place, at some point. Uh, the other reason that I wanted to go with this pack this time was for these. Um, anybody that you've talked to has a horror story of flipping their kayak. Um, you know, it's usually their fishing gear that gets lost and it's not cheap to replace. Um, I didn't use any of the USB ports yesterday. Uh, I did test them, so they do, they do work, they do charge. Um, I didn't use them yesterday because I didn't need to. Um, but these power ports, man, this was the best idea. I mean, having everything just just located all over the kayak that I could drill into, I can add whatever I want into here. And, uh, yeah, super awesome idea. Um, yeah, all this stuff worked great. My camera mount. I have some footage on here like eight hours we'll see if i decide to edit that and and post that somewhere else i think that's pretty much it though um yeah other than the couple gripes the steering i don't know i don't use it too much to begin with um the only time i could see myself using this on a regular basis is if i did a, a stern mount motor um but for those that do jump into the bona fide line keep keep that in mind um, that rudder you don't gain a, a, a whole bunch of control out of it um, and when you turn too far in one direction it wants to swing you back the other way um, so uh, just that and then the space on the deck for your catchboard uh, I think most people upgrading are used to having to put your catchboard up on the top rail anyways uh, just keep that in mind that you know this they didn't change that for this to make it easier for the anglers to measure on the floor and I mean it's still me using the small one I used to use the big 32 inch catch board um, I downsized for bass just because I don't need the 32 um, if I catch anything bigger than a 26 I'll score the 26 and be fine with it <laughs> like that's not if you're if you're catching if you're catching a 26 inch bass then then you're probably gonna go play the lottery and retire so um, yeah other than that I don't think there's anything else I can mention about it I mean it was a great day out uh, this kayak's been more than I could have hoped for other than those couple little things um, yeah so anyways uh, if anybody does have any questions. If anybody does have any questions, uh, I did use a lot of Yak Attack stuff on this kayak. Um, and some of my connections and stuff were, were name brand stuff. Uh, but I did price out, um, I won't say lower end, more affordable. I did price out a bunch of more affordable um, equivalents for all this stuff when I was doing the build. And I found that in my budget, I could afford what I have. Uh, but for those that can't, feel free to message me or comment or whatever and ask, you know, hey, I saw you have that, but I would like a more affordable version of it. Uh, don't hesitate to hit me up and I'll do what I can to help you guys. Because um, a lot of this stuff can be reused on other brands of kayaks. It just happens to be on a bona fide this time. So, all right, guys, have a good day.